Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be heading into the world of cryptids, so be sure to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I was driving from Atlanta to Lexington with my girlfriend to visit my parents. I like to drive at night since there are less people on the road and I can take my time. It was 3 a.m. and we were making good time. I had stopped at a gas station and picked us up some coffee. We were due in about an hour. My girlfriend was sleeping soundly and I'm listening to a quiet radio humming away. I start getting a little drowsy and take a sip. Road was just as my coffee. No cars in sight except for a few spotted on the side of the road here and there. In the distance I could make out what looks like a hitchhiker, or what I think is one, but I can't really tell due to poor lighting. As I get closer I start to notice other things, like how this person is kind of thin and tall, for the most part apparently brown. I'm right up to this thing now, it's about 20 feet away, and it turns and locks eyes with me as I pass by. This was no person, and it's the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. It was a deer, or I tell myself it was. I've seen deer stand on their hind legs to fight, but they still have deer posture when they do this. Not only that, but I was watching this thing walk for about 30 seconds from first sighting it in the distance to passing it. The posture it had was human, standard biped stance, arms back, chin down. But the worst part were the eyes, or lack thereof. In their place were two large black pits, almost black holish. I'll never forget the stare down it gave me. The instant I passed it, I had the only panic attack I've ever had in my life. I had to wake up my girlfriend to keep calm enough to get to an exit with a large gas station a few miles away. Like hell I was going off a ramp close to that thing. After we pulled into the station I had a complete meltdown. I began crying harder than I ever thought I could. I couldn't talk, breathe or do anything but I wanted to curl into a ball and cry. After 30 minutes or so she finally gets me to calm down enough to tell her what happened. While I don't think she believed what I saw, she knew that I was convinced and legitimately scared to death. Every once in a blue moon, I'll dream about it and wake up crying or in a cold sweat, and she'll tease me about it, or roll over and ignore me instead of comforting me over the one thing I've ever been terrified of. But I know what I saw. I know it will haunt me for the rest of my days. This takes place in April of 2013. Me and a friend had just been to the movies and was just walking around at about 10.45pm when we decide that we should take a shortcut through the schoolyard of our old school which had since been abandoned. It was in pretty bad shape. As we walked through the schoolyard we decided to try and get inside the school building to explore a little bit. Now the school consists of two wings, so the building is an L shape if viewed from above. It is three stories tall and has three entrances. The main entrance leads to a kind of main hall which connects the two wings. Each wing has staircases at each end of the corridors which lead to the different floors. One of the windows right by the entrance to the lower wing was actually wide open so we could easily get in. We were now in the basement. We used our cell phones as flashlights and made sure not to point them towards the windows to avoid being seen. Even though the building was not in use, there was still a lot of stuff just left lying around. Musical equipment, uniforms, a pool table, chairs, so we were just exploring each room in the basement to see if we could find anything cool. We explored for about 15 minutes before we headed up to the first floor and we were now in the main hall. There was some kind of tarp or large plastic sheet hanging there to separate the hall and the lower wing for some reason. I assume it was for some kind of construction work. We went down one of the corridors and started exploring the classrooms. Every classroom had either been vandalized or suffered some kind of water damage, so everything was very broken or rotting. In hindsight, I think we're lucky the floors didn't collapse on us. 
We had just come out of the third classroom and were in the corridor when we heard someone moving the tarp and plastic sheeting in the main hall. This was not the wind or anything, and we could definitely tell something was physically moving it. We could also hear footsteps, although the rhythm of the steps was kind of odd. It sounded like someone changed their walking pace sporadically. We immediately went inside a classroom to hide, as we thought someone had called security on us. We hid behind the door in the classroom for about two minutes, dead quiet. We didn't hear anything else during this time, so we figured it had to be the wind or just random noise. We decided to push on. We went through the corridor and up the stairs in the other end of the main hall and explored the second floor. While we were there, we would occasionally hear some noises, but we just brushed it off as wind. After a while, we had explored the rest of the corridor as we decided to walk down the staircase that led from the second floor to the hall. Halfway down the staircase, there was this plateau before the second set of stairs, and this is where things took a turn. We could see the plastic from there, and it was moving. We also heard some kind of scratching noise, and we stood there for a second just listening, and I decided to peek around the corner to see what was making the sound. What I saw scared the living hell out of me. It was some kind of creature. It was skinny, almost completely naked. I couldn't see any clothes at least. Had really thin strands of hair and was very pale. Like corpse pale, almost completely white. The first thing that came to mind was that it resembled Gollum from Lord of the Rings, just bigger. It was crouching down and was scratching the floor and it made some growly, groany breathing noises. It was facing away from us, so I just stood frozen for a good while and watched. It took a step back and just pointed at this thing and looked at my friend. He peeked around the corner and immediately I could see his facial expression change into a combination of horror and shock. It was reassuring in a way to know he could see it too. We just stood there for a good 20 seconds watching this thing do whatever it was doing, and the most cliche horror movie thing happened. My friend started backing away slowly and while doing so stepped on a piece of glass that cracked. This startled the creature and it quickly looked over its shoulder right at me. I just bolted at that point and we ran all the way to the basement to get out, and the whole way there I swear it felt like it was right behind us. We ran back to my friend's house and when we got there we had a kind of debriefing session, making sure that we both saw the same thing. The closest thing to a reference I can find is Gollum. I understand if you think I'm lying. I would be skeptical if someone on the internet was telling me this story, but I swear this actually happened. And my friend confirms it to this day. We got a good enough look at it to confirm that it was humanoid but didn't really resemble a human being. The only explanation I can think of was that it was a homeless dude that for some reason was naked in this abandoned school, but this is in northern Norway during the winter. You won't survive very long without clothes. Also, I live in a very small town with very few, if any, homeless people, so that would be quite unlikely. It could also be some kind of animal that had found its way inside, but we got a good look at it and it doesn't resemble any animal I've ever seen before or since. I have no idea what it was. I'm normally a rational, Occam Razor kind of person, but we saw what we saw. And we still have no explanation for what that was. I grew up in a rural area of Honduras, a really spiritual country, in the middle of Central America, plagued with plenty of paranormal events that may not even compare to many places in the world. The country has a lot of strange and unexplainable things going on, to the point that people are really just into it, and another reason why people became Christian. For a while, the country was the second most dangerous place in the world, with Iraq or Afghanistan being the first. Just let that sink in. When I was in the fourth grade, there were legends people would share about this kid-snatching creature that would look similar to goblins or leprechauns that lived deep in the jungle or forested areas, 
and would snatch kids up. Honestly, at first, I thought it was all just nonsense, but after deeper examination, I came to realize they were very real, and they had some sort of time-manipulating ability in which they would use on groups of kids to get them disoriented to be able to snatch some. After talking to many elders and families of people whose kids were snatched, a lot of cases had the same thing to say, because some kids were able to escape this manipulation, including myself, but it was before it happened to me, that the kids would come back home with their brothers, sisters and friends missing and would say they lost them by the well. The elders would ask the kids about where this well was and every time they tried to show them they never could and usually just ended up near places like rivers or running water where obviously there was no well and the kids were still missing. The elders would proceed to worry and ask the kids why they're so tired. Did they run away from someone? This was legit. This really happened. Questions rose about human or sex trafficking as it was a prominent thing in the area as well and obviously everyone was worried about the kids. Not to mention drugs are prominent in the area, including stuff like devil's breath. But in all cases, the situations were very similar with the kids and they would never be found. Well, now that you've got context, I always thought it was just some weird stuff until I was about nine. Me and a few friends decided to go swimming on the neighborhood river. We swam for a while till we started to drift a little lower along the river and we decided to get off in the area that looked like a somewhat clear part filled with sand and small trees. This area specifically was part of a deep forest. So when I got out, I started wandering because I'd never been in that area before and was on my own. So I walked along the clear area and saw this really small trail that led to a clearer area and in front really sort of close in the middle was this clear section of jungle that looked really old. Then I saw the well. For some reason, I thought about just walking there and taking a closer look, since it was right there. I walked and I walked and every time I tried approaching it, it almost felt like the well got further and further instead of closer. I walked again and as I walked, I began hearing voices in the background like people talking, but I knew I was in the middle of a jungle and there wasn't anyone there. So I instantly realized this must have been the stuff the kids were talking about. I turned around and the river was now nowhere to be seen. And the trail looked like it was miles of trail stretching to the horizon. I ran and ran, closed my eyes and asked God please to take me home. As I ran and cried, the laughter somehow stopped and felt like something weird was watching me. I got off. My friend said that they couldn't find me and thought I went home. So they went home after half an hour of swimming in the river. But somehow I spent three hours there. It still puzzles me. Because when I grew up, I gained the courage to see if the well was even real. Or the trail. And it turns out that it wasn't. I never saw anything. But I came to the conclusion that what really happened was something beyond my comprehension and that my perception of time and space were messed up because of something insidious happening there. It must have been similar to what the other children experienced because whatever it was was laughing at me when I was trying to run away for miles. But I think what got me off was closing my eyes and asking God to take me home. So I made it. But it was drastically later than the time I felt I spent in there. I've kept quiet about this one for a while because some people really tend to think you're crazy for having an experience like this. And I'm still not able to comprehend what or why I experienced. One night, me and two friends were all walking around at night in the fields around a small town in Michigan. Our destination was a junkyard tucked away behind several fields, home to rusted out cars, semi-trailers, farm equipment, etc. We were cutting through the fields to avoid the trigger-happy farmers that live around there. We were nearly there and were foiled by a stream which was too wide to leap. 
It was late autumn, and wet feet would be uncomfortable, so we backtracked into the adjacent field. From our corner of the field, there was a tree line that ran east to west, and southward, the land rose into a large hill. We stood for a moment, discussing our options when my eyes were drawn to a large white boulder seeming to glow in the moonlight. It was around 75 yards away, and I was idly staring at it when it moved. It unfolded. Standing at 10 to 12 feet, this bipedal being, skeleton thing, pure white with long limbs. For the space of a second, it looked at us and then took off. I think it was running, but it could have been gliding or flying. Honestly, I don't know. It crossed the field up over the hill, a distance of probably a hundred yards in two to three seconds in silence and was then gone. Only two of the three of us saw it. And after a few minutes of incoherent gibbering, we attempted to rationalize and explain what the hell it was we just saw and decided it must be some kind of alien. A year later, I was at a party and the subject of aliens came up. I say that I've seen an alien and they say, yeah, let me guess, in Saranac, right? I confirm. We exchange mutual looks of awe and he directs me to his friend Eric who grew up in said town. Eric tells me he has seen strange things there his whole life. Lights in the sky and stuff, but never humanoid beings. Fast forward another year, and I get a phone call from an acquaintance who was sitting at work when he noticed a girl staring at him strangely. She eventually walks up to him and says, I feel like I need to talk to you. She proceeded to tell him, that her friend's dad is the head of a vampire clan in a town near Saranac. My friend remembers my story about the weird thing in the area, then asks her if she knows anything about Saranac. She gets very defensive and eventually reveals that Saranac is a breeding ground for dragons. Yeah. To this day, I'm not certain if I saw a dragon, an alien, or a vampire. But I did a bit of poking around and I heard from a girl that lived there that she had seen a random 15 foot scorch mark on a roadside in the middle of fields, which was very unnerving. Any illumination or similar tales would be greatly appreciated to help me clear up this matter once and for all. I've grown up with a relatively open mind in regards to strange phenomena and things that aren't generally accepted by mainstream science or society, but always approach things with an appropriate level of skepticism. I've spent a very large majority of my life in the woods, hunting, fishing, and mountain climbing miles deep in the backcountry. And so within all that time, I've observed a number of things that I can't explain away. I've gone camping and trekking solo many times in my life, it was liberating to just pack whatever you needed to survive and go miles deep into the backcountry where animals aren't even afraid of you simply because they aren't familiar with humans. It feels so special to be the only one immersed in that environment, but not anymore. Behind all of the natural beauty is an underlying anxiety, fear, and legitimate danger an environment that once felt so comforting and therapeutic turned into one that drove me absolutely mad with questions and uncertainties and is now one I will not enter alone, for I know what's possible and what is truly roaming around the forests of North America. It was 2016 in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania where I saw a creature that forever changed my life and the way I perceive the world we live. The first time I'd ever heard of a creature dubbed the Rake was during a conversation with a friend who had lived in the area for years and had encountered this creature several times in close proximity to his home. I remember him asking me if I'd ever seen anything strange in a large plot of the woods across the street from his house, which at the time I had not. However, Long before it was brought up, I'd always had a deep feeling in my chest about this plot of woods. 
I didn't know what it was, I just knew that it carried a very heavy and dark energy that was really strong enough to encourage you to stay out. My friend took out their phone and showed me a picture of the rake that comes up with any Google search, a very generic picture. I laughed it off as he warned me about this creature because I genuinely thought he was just growing weed or something in the woods and didn't want me to find it, when I couldn't have been more wrong. Months had passed with little more than strange noises at night and the sound of some big cats being carried off into the dark until the day that changed my life happened. It was midnight. A rainstorm had just dumped a bunch of rain and me and the co-worker at the time had just clocked out and were heading to the friend's house who had warned me originally about this creature. His house is on a long straight road with a dead end. Very few houses on one side and woods on the other. As we're heading down the road with high beams on, my co-worker slams on the brakes and starts freaking out, saying that he just saw the creature kneeling down on the shoulder of the road. Instantly, without thought, I jumped out of the car and heard running and crashing through the woods in a parallel line to the road. Thankfully, due to the hard braking, the car shifted slightly so that the high beams were pointing into the woods. When I saw it, that's when it changed my life, my beliefs, and shattered my reality and turned them upside down. At least a six foot tall naked creature with greyish white skin and long arms ran through the section of woods fully illuminated by the headlines, giving me at least 15 seconds of uninterrupted visual contact with the creature, firmly imprinting it in my head. It ran just like a human, However, it was incredibly fast and jumping over any obstacle in the way until it reached the point where the headlights no longer illuminated the woods. It then pretended to jump and run deeper into the woods. However, it actually turned and headed back to the road where I lost sight of it and in the dark part of the woods. As I was standing in the middle of the road, dumbfounded with my jaw to the floor, trying to comprehend the severity of the situation, it crawled out from the woods and crossed the road on all fours, 60 yards from me and disappeared into the woods on the other side. I've been tormented by the creature since. It makes me confused, sad and curious and I can't get the image out of my head. I can't forget the feeling this creature gave me when I lived there, playing and toying with my head in waking life and in my dreams. I don't go into the back country alone anymore. I can't enjoy the solitude without anxiety ruining it, and I can't be free. This creature exists, and so do others, that we just can't understand. And it's important for people to realize this so they can enjoy nature while also being safe. This happened in Juarez, Mexico, when I was a kid. I went to a kid's party with my family. The party, as Mexican parties can be, went on for quite a while. We were in a big ranch with cows, horses, chicken and other livestock. By the time night fell, we were playing with some kids and a bit far from our mother's view when we heard an animal making a very loud noise. It sounded like wings. Imagine what a pterodactyl would sound like. Well, that's what I imagined. We look to the sky and see what I can only describe as a reptilian creature with big gray wings. Here in Juarez, I've heard stories about large birds. Some people talk about gargoyles. On the mountains in this region, there are caves, and people who live near them always say they see UFOs and large birds. If you Google it, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. I couldn't see any feathers for sure, but in any case, we were freaked out. One of the kids was terrified more than the others and started screaming at the top of his lungs, a chupacabra. That scared the rest of us, and we all fled to our mums as quickly as we could. I don't think they believed us. 
They tried calming us down and said that surely we must have just seen roosters. But believe you me, having been at that party a while, we'd seen roosters. This was no rooster. We explained that to them, but they still didn't believe us. She just said we made it up. But I've never forgotten the experience, and it continues to haunt me. Does anyone know what I may have witnessed? It all started as a warm night. May 28th. Nothing was out the ordinary. My friends and I were playing video games on a high school night, procrastinating homework and yelling at each other about some stupid problems in the game. When we grew tired of our game, I signed off for the night. I didn't live far from the general store, so I thought I may as well hop on my bike, ride there to grab some cream soda and sunflower seeds, so I did. The bike ride usually lasts about 10 minutes. The bike ride consisted of going through my neighborhood, a scary ass bike trail, then another neighborhood. So I put in my earbuds and just rode there. I got all the way there when I realized I didn't have my wallet, which was very disappointing since it was getting dark. I got back on my bike and started the ride back. Usually when I go back, I cut through a backyard instead of taking the trail. It's mainly downhill on the way back, so I usually don't take the trail back. But for some reason I felt compelled to go down the trail like a pull. When I was riding down I heard an inhuman scream, a mix between a bald eagle and a human scream. I of course looked towards where the sound was coming from, and I saw an extremely skinny, super pale, tall figure get on all fours and start running for me. When I say extremely skinny, I mean it was skin and bone, and the legs and arms were super long. The face was nearly featureless besides a mouth and two black eyes, and I got the hell out of there as fast as my bike could handle. I know I wasn't imagining it. I now have my license, and refuse to go down that trail when it's remotely close to dark. I was going to take my dog out to take a piss out in the yard. The moon shined just enough that I could see. My dog wasn't coming when I called, so I scanned the yard and found him and picked him up. I spotted what I thought was my dog 40 feet or so in front of me, but it had no head, no legs and no tail. I just figured it was my dog turned around holding his face and nibbling an itch. I was confused because it moved like an earthworm, squirming slightly, almost melding with the ground. That's what I thought. I couldn't really see because it was dark out, so I called my dog's name and he showed up beside me, ready to go in. All of a sudden, I couldn't see this weird creature in my yard. I told my dog to run inside, and I ran in with him. I still don't know what I saw. This happened when I was living in Needleville, Texas. I left my mum's house to go feed our dogs that were living at my grandma's house. She had space for them, so we stayed there, and we lived a few miles down the street. This was a little after the 2008 crash, and we had lost our home back in South Carolina like most other people had, so we had moved into a smaller rental property in the middle of pretty much nowhere. Needleville is a tiny farm town with about 300 people tops. It was a hot, muggy summer evening, and I headed over to go see my grandma and chit-chat for a bit. I fed the dogs and hung out with my grandma for a few hours. It got dark out, and I decided that I should head back home. So I got back in my car and drove back home. When I started pulling up on my mum's house though, I see a large, squatting shape in the driveway like a gorilla. I start to immediately enter the driveway, slowly, and as soon as my tires hit the gravel, it immediately whips around to face me. Then and there, lit up in my headlights, is this hulking creature about the same size and build as a gorilla, but covered in thick, silver fur, and had a huge, bulbous, ruby-red, chitinous eyes, 
and with a gruesome snarling mouth of sharp white teeth that appeared to be a good two to three inches long. It had a small forehead and a round head that was about the same size as a human head, also covered in the same thick silver fur. In the moment that it heard my tires hit gravel, it turned, snarled, and bared its teeth at my car for a brief moment, then immediately turned towards the bushes on the other side of the yard and kicked off with its feet, just like a gorilla would. It loped off into the bushes. Alternatively, it swinged on its hands, landing on its feet, and disappeared into the bushes. I pulled into my mum's driveway and just waited in my car for a minute to let the thing run away before I bolted to the house. As soon as the light on the front porch came on and my sister poked her head out to see why I wasn't inside yet, I launched my happy ass right out of the car and full-on sprinted to the door. I never saw the creature ever again after that, but that didn't stop me from being vigilant for a few months after. I was visiting Honduras and discussing the paranormal with my cousin. They said they've never seen a ghost, but everyone had a duende story. The most interesting thing was about a schoolmate of my cousin's. My cousin's schoolmate was a beautiful blonde girl, inside and out, not conceited, super sweet and friends with everyone, especially the town losers, as they refer to themselves, my cousin being one of them. You know, the unpopular kids at school. She had a duende that was following her since she was eight years old. He was obsessed with her and would throw rocks at any boy that attempted to date her. As she grew older, it got annoying that her suitors would be scared away by this rock-throwing elf. My cousin told her to tell the elf to go away. She replied, any man scared of an elf is not worthy of my affection. Ha! <laughs> You go, girl. Well, fast forward to her being a 30-year-old virgin. She got a boyfriend who was not afraid of the elf and continued to date her even though this elf messed with him a lot, throwing rocks, stealing his keys, and leaving nails around his car. She lost her virginity to him, and apparently the elf was so disgusted, he finally left her alone. Another story comes from my grandmother, when she was 40, doctors told her she'd be completely blind by the age of 50. She's very religious and not superstitious at all, but became desperate to save her sight. A neighbor told her about a herbalist living in the mountains of Copan who had a whistling duende as her assistant. My grandma went with her to visit the woman. She told the woman what the doctors said about her eyes, and the woman translated to the duende by whistling. My grandmother and her friend said they didn't see it, but they did hear it whistle back in response. The duende whistled to the woman and gave my grandmother some herbs he gathered. My grandmother took the strange herbs, and although her eyesight did not get better, it did not get worse. She passed away at age 70, with the same eye prescription she had at 40. Not all duendes are evil, I imagine. And my last story is about a friend of mine. He said he had a witch for a grandmother, and while staying with her in her hut, she would tell my friend and her sister to stay away from a tree in particular, because that is where the duende lived. The story goes that the duende will steal little blonde girls. My friend said she didn't believe in witches or elves, and thought her grandmother made the story up to keep her close to the house. Well, one afternoon they were playing hide-and-seek near the tree to be naughty, and after counting to ten, she saw something run behind the tree and followed it thinking it was her sister. She found her sister staring wide-eyed at something, and it was a duende. She was ten years old at the time. It was shorter than her, had a pointy red hat and a very wrinkled face, almost like an opossum, and was smiling ear to ear. It reached over to grab her little sister, who was blonde, 
but she grabbed her sister first and they took off running to the house. When they got to the house, they told their grandmother about the encounter and she simply said, I told you to stay away from there. Listen to your witch grandma. I'm not entirely sure why, but allegedly the duendes prefer blonde hair as it resembles gold. But I'll never know for sure. I grew up in the Midwest and would spend a lot of time on the family farm, roughly 150 acres of just soybean and nothing, which was surrounded by a small wooded area. One night when I was about 12 or so, I heard some cats fighting outside, so I grabbed a flashlight and started heading out. It sounded like it was coming from the woods, so I started walking there. When I was close to the edge of the trees, I shone my flashlight in and saw an eye shine. I thought it was a cat, so I made a noise to try to get it to move and made a few more steps forward. I don't know what it was, but it was not a cat. I remember it ran towards me and made some sort of low rumbling noise. It pushed against my legs and I lost my balance. As I did, I put my hand out to grab onto something and I felt it. It felt like bare skin, no fur, just skin. It was about the size of a large dog. It ran off after only knocking me over, but that was enough to shake me up. To this day, I have no clue what the hell I encountered and it bothers me whenever I think about it. There was a park and trail in a wooded area right behind my house. Very close to it, there's a playground with a basketball court. And it's a neighborhood park that often has a lot of people around it, even at night for the skate park and basketball court. I often walk from my backyard to the playground with my siblings and we felt like fishing in the little swampy lake area. It was around 9 p.m. I walked from my backyard with my little sister and my boyfriend to the playground. It was getting dark, and my boyfriend was still playing basketball with my cousins, who drove to the park and met us there. So my little sister and I decided to go back home by ourselves as it was a short walk. We were walking our usual route, and the backyards of other homes are very visible to us. And so is ours, but it's a little further away from the playground, and we're the only people who have a big, tall white fence, so you can't see over our yard. Anyway, we walk closer, but before we could get that far, I suddenly feel the instinct to look at something. I stop walking our usual route, and turn my head slightly to the right to see a tall, white figure. At this point, it's light enough outside to see something far, but not too dark to see it that clearly. And the figure is like, unhuman, nor anything I've ever seen in my life. I tried to think hard of what it was, but I realized it looked like it was coming towards my sister and I. It was about 20 feet away. Thinking I was a little crazy, I asked my sister if she could see it, and pointed at it. In fright, she said yes, and I said, I think it's running at us. So we both ran back to the court where my cousins and boyfriend were, and we ran really fast because we were very scared. I'll try my best to describe the figure or what I saw, but it's hard. There was a really tall white stick, 10 feet tall, and it was waving in a weird way, like really fast and I thought it may be a deer, because we've seen one there before, but it was always way too tall and weird looking like an object, not a human. I'm a 21 year old and I'm Christian, and I've never seen anything paranormal, but that weird thing my sister and I encountered was simply unexplainable, because we always use that route and it's right behind our house. I just wonder if anyone has ever seen anything similar. My parents and others won't believe me, and even my sister is doubting she really saw it now. We got too scared to walk back, and luckily my brother came in the car to pick us up. The figure wasn't scary at first, it was just so confusing, and I was perplexed, trying to understand what it could be. But then I feared for my sister, 
as I saw it ambling towards us. What the hell did we encounter then? This happened when I was around five. My family and I went to the Lake District in the UK for a small holiday. We went to a lodge. One day when I was there, I looked out of the window to a bunch of dead bushes and a tree. It was winter, and I was looking for a good two minutes when suddenly from the corner of my eye, a massive ball of what appeared to be fur hopped or waddled into the forest. So, I watch it until I can't see it anymore. And my mum said it must have been a hare or a rabbit. But the thing was, it was about the size of two car wheels stacked on top of each other, about the size of half a monster truck wheel. I'm fat, but I could only see the back of it, and hares and rabbits are small. So I started thinking it was a bear, but bears aren't native to the UK, and I can't find anything that it could have been online. It was like a brown or dark beige. I looked every day for about an hour, but never saw anything like it, or what it could have been again. A friend of mine and I were hiking through the woods. It was dark out and we were beginning to head back home, when something came across the path by a fallen tree. It's hard to describe, but it looked like a man in a hooded cloak. It stood and then slowly and silently moved to a tree and keeled. We couldn't see its face, but we got the feeling it was watching us. We tried to shrug it off and kept moving. Further down the trail, we saw it again. Being in our early teens, we decided stupidly that we were going to get to the bottom of this, so we started after it and began charging it. We screamed and it stopped, and it took off into the woods. Feeling brave again, I grabbed a big spear-shaped stick and took off after it. I ran for a bit through the woods until I could see the outline of it once more up ahead through the moonlight. I knelt and watched as another popped up beside it, and another. Then I heard movement to the side of me, realizing that whatever these things were were surrounding me, and I quickly noped out in the direction I left my friend. I know it sounds like the creepy part, but it gets weirder. My friend wasn't there when I left them, so I called out to him. He responded a little way away and followed with, You gotta see this. So I followed his voice and came out to a clearing. It was bright as hell, and floating around the clearing were legit balls of light, almost like the fairy fountains from The Legend of Zelda, those red balls that float near the fountain. Except, these were pure white light. We looked at each other and then hightailed it back to the trail and back home. It was definitely the strangest thing I've ever experienced. I was riding in the car with one of my friends and her mum back in middle school. We stopped at Quick Trip before school to get a drink. I obviously left my backpack in the car, but when I got back, the mum told me she heard a growling noise coming from my bag. I didn't believe her, but she said it was true. I didn't think about it too much, I did think my house was haunted for a while due to knocking in the windows at one point, but I chose not to believe it. Later that evening, I went to my bathroom to wash my face and brush my teeth, and then I heard it. The growling. I leaned towards my backpack, which was leaning against my desk. Surely it had to be my dogs, but neither were in my room. I tried to think of any other things in my room that could have made that noise, but I couldn't think of any reasonable explanation. I immediately emptied my backpack out completely, but didn't find anything. And I often wonder on what it could have been. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. I do hope that you enjoyed tonight's collection of stories. If of course you did, don't forget to let me know down below. You'd be surprised how far a comment and a like subscribing and pressing the bell button you know how far that goes really it does go a long way and i will love you forever if you do so hope we're having a fun time with our week in the woods hey maybe that's what we should call it our week in the woods it's been a blast so far and there are even more surprises in store for tomorrow so i'm hoping to see you there i'm gonna leave it here for now though and as always a huge thanks to my members and patrons whose names can be seen on screen i love you guys forever and yes if any of you want to join, 
Follow the links in the description to do that. But for now, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.